Welcome to the Movers Mindset Podcast. These are the public episodes, but do you want to hear more? Become an insider for access to extended guest conversations, follow-up episodes with your questions, and other deep dives. Visit moversmindset.com slash insiders. Thanks for listening. Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Hi, my name is Marcello. Marcello Palozzo is the co-founder of the Parkour Wave Association in Italy. He's practiced parkour for 11 years and has been studying under Ido Portel for the last four. He's currently running his dissertation for his master's degree in strength and conditioning. Welcome, Marcello. Thank you, Craig. Marcello, I've been watching with great interest as your your new project. I'm not quite sure what to call it because it doesn't really seem to have a name. So can you just unpack a little bit what you're up to these days? Mm -hmm. So yeah, currently I'm doing a lot of uh, artistic research in the field of parkour. Uh, but trying to gather a lot of different information from uh, different fields um, I'm uh, researching into. So, for example, <clears throat> I like to um, try and pick the things that I'm learning from my master's, uh, like regarding strength, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, trying to reapply them into parkour. How does this uh, entangle together and mix up with different things that I, that I knew before? And uh, how do they tie to my personal philosophy, et cetera, et cetera? Or... Uh, a lot of the studies that I've been doing with Ido and um, uh, all the team. Um, how can I use some of the principles that I've seen over there and then how can I reapply them into my work? So, um, for example, um, I would start to um, pick a team, uh, which could be, for example, uh, fear, and then uh, go into it with all the different tools that I've developed through the years. And then, uh, okay. Okay, and then I, would, um, I would progress that single uh, uh, theme forward. Uh, for a certain amount of months, I would go into a project, and then after the project is done, I would deliver the material uh, mm-hmm. both to the public or to my students, mm, and then move on into the next. Mm. So can you give me uh, an example that's a little more concrete? Um, I've been trying to find ways to get the guests to share something with the listeners that would like give them a takeaway or a piece of homework or something to think about. Is there a, mm-hmm. something like that you'd want to share? Yeah, of course. One of the mm, basic things that should be in our lives, I believe, is always um, trying to find a way to step out of the comfort zone. Uh, so mm, if you are uh, living on, like literally everywhere, try to go on your roof and try to, <laughs> for example, and just to uh, try to be there, like look down, uh, spend time at height, uh, do something that is very different to your uh, uh, normal routine. And I think you, you will start to gain a lot out of it. So, and try to do it uh, also consistently. So instead of doing it just once and uh, having this idea that we need to find the extreme challenge, try to do it for uh, for a certain amount of uh, time. So maybe set a routine for yourself and then uh, go out there, spend time at height um, and and try to really see what you can get out of this experience. That exposure. Uh, Yeah, out of of that exposure. Um, Yeah. I feel, I feel like this is uh, one of the most um, important things about my practice. I always try to bring it back into an emotional layer because I think uh, like true learning uh, should be emotional. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless uh, there is that element as well in it, something is missing. Mm, so I would say, yes, uh, try to also find a way to trigger those uh, primal uh, instincts, needs, or instincts emotions, and emotions or... that, that are inside the body. Mm, and uh, yeah, it, it can be as easy as, um, like for example, standing into to a high wall mm-hmm. and walking onto a high wall. It doesn't necessarily have to be like balancing on the bar at height or doing some uh, crazy stunts. Yeah, there. like a dangerous like roof climb. It can be just yeah, like being at height. Being at height already, if you're not used to it, it can give you a lot of things. Mm-hmm. It seems to me that there's a couple different ways to experience um, a session. So if someone trains with you, they could then choose to, uh, maybe the metaphor is the empty cup, um, martial arts methodology where you you empty your cup, you take the session, and then when you're done, you empty your cup again and you just walk away and let it kind of soak in by osmosis. And you and I had a brief discussion about your way of gathering knowledge works a little differently. Can you kind of walk me through what you do when you go through a session afterwards? Yeah, of course. Of course, yeah, I remember the, the talk about yesterday. So basically, Mm, what I like to do with the, with my students or the people I, I try to influence in general is this. Uh, I try to tell them, okay, now you came here, you, you gained some knowledge, but you didn't come here just for the experience. You didn't come here just to uh, have, a, have a good time. Like, uh, if, if you are being exposed to a certain material, it's good for you to go back home mm-hmm. uh, and to try and find a way to categorize the material 
mm, to write it down in such a way that then uh, it can be accessed. Mm. Uh, because one of the, you know, many people have been talking about this uh, toxicity of uh, information in general in these right, days. Overload, right, overload, right. Yeah, it's, uh, we can find literally everything everywhere. So uh, the point is, how do I access the information? So you would take a workshop, yes, good, but then go home, uh, break down all the different info, uh, create some mind maps, make it accessible, and then uh, go back into it. If you don't go back into it, it means your notes uh, were not good enough. You didn't uh, uh, found a way. You didn't find a way to to make them uh, uh, also sustainable for you, uh, and you just basically wasted time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not a small thing because many people uh, have now now this addiction of or going into mm -hmm. workshops and uh, here and there and mm -hmm. there, and then nothing really changes in their practice. So make sure you also stay true and honest to why you want to do what you want to do. And if you actually want to learn, uh, one, one, uh, one of the best ways is like literally go back home, take out a big, big piece of paper, uh, put it on the wall, oh, start drawing, <laughs> yeah, start drawing all the lines. different ideas. Start, and then uh, maybe put it into a, a virtual form, like take, take a picture or use an app or like to, to actually create the thing, uh, create the map and then uh, go back into it regularly and see if you can add something and see what's uh, what's redundant. Try, try to create the best algorithm for you to, uh, to, to categorize the material and so on. So uh, I think this is, this is a golden piece of advice, <laughs> but few right. people will, start, will actually do it because I, I, I've started doing this with a lot of people and few people actually do it. Yeah, and it uh, strikes me as not easy to do because you have to like do all the work a second time to reshift it around and categorize it. Exactly, exactly. But, uh, but the fact is try to find a way uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the mind map. It can be really anything, but uh, a way for you to access to, uh, to yeah to create the material so that you can access it. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people like to write super long notes or mm -hmm. real readjust the notes uh, uh, or talk at the, at the micro, mi microphone and like uh, then re listen. It can it can also be an option as long as it works. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Let's take a left turn and see if you have a story that you would like to share. Yeah, so, um, well, actually, when I was going out of uh, high school, I remember thinking, uh, okay, I'm uh, in the middle of the ocean, like an insect, like uh, I have nowhere to go, <laughs> like many, <laughs> many people, no? Like uh, um, I, I used to think about, about it this way, like literally no direction, uh, nowhere to swim, mm -hmm. mm, where am I going to go, who am I going to be? Like the classic uh, uh, identity research that everybody needs to go through in their lives. Mm, and I remember thinking, okay, so uh, my father is a pharmacist, so maybe I'm going to study pharmacy. Why not? <laughs> like, anyway, it's going to be a choice. Like, uh, uh, like for example, everything that uh, was in the, in the movement field could have stayed like an hobby, and then mm -hmm. I could have like, worked, because we have this idea now that work is different than... <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> you know, that like, work should be what you are doing, right? Yeah, exactly. So... Uh, I remember starting studying pharmacy actually in university. I was like going there every day and looking at people and like, this is not what I want to do. But still, <laughs> <This is not laughs> I was like, this is not what I, uh, but uh, not necessarily because it was fun. It was just felt wrong because my body and my mind was just aiming into another direction. I was being constantly being pulled mm -hmm. and uh, moving forward with the handbrake on. Huh? Mm -hmm. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, like um, and then one day I had the real realization that many people have, but uh, I, I still remember the day I um, went back home. I was really tired because I was like sleeping five hours per night to study and then train and do that, everything. I said, okay, I stop. Right. Uh, <laughs> I stop. I'm just, I'm just not going to do it anymore. And uh, everything's going to change now. And uh, I got this uh, sudden realization that every, everyone can change everything in a, sm in a moment, mm -hmm. literally. Uh, and uh, that, mo that that thing made, made me like uh, really understand this and uh, it helped me through throughout my life and I think it's something that uh, it's very empowering once you do it uh, one time then it can be replicated mm. easily more easily mm, of course so on that day I was at home and said okay just now I'm gonna go. Uh, I booked a flight to London to study with uh, some of the Parkour Generations guys and to go and do adapt. I remember at the time, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I just told my my mom and dad like yeah, at the time I was like, Bye -bye. okay, uh, see you, my good parents. Like I, I wasn't living with them, uh, but uh, still, <laughs> it was a bit like, oh, you want to do this? Uh, and of course, 
in the beginning for them it was like quite a shock and the same with some some other friends or uh, mm -hmm. uh, members of the family we were like <laughs> what are you doing and i was like everybody calm down yeah i know exactly what i want to do and then i'm gonna show you with the with the results like mm. and then from that moment on i i digged into into what i wanted to do 101 percent and it just worked from the very first first moment and i had I didn't have deadline. I had death, death lines. That, like there was no, um, uh, no no option, no way out. For me, it was just now I do this. That's it. Mm -hmm. Period. And it actually worked. So for everybody out there, like uh, that, want take to actually leap. like take the leap. But it's uh, it's easier than it seems. Procrastination is uh, it's uh, um, a black beast because you start thinking about it. Don't even think about it. Just mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> now the classic. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the classic sentence, but it's, it is as it is. Mm -hmm. So since you recently started, um, you're really like digging into your research for your master's degree. Um, has that teaching you things about how to teach? Uh, like it's, that's all about learning new material, but is it also teaching you things about teaching? I'm just mm -hmm. curious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a huge topic for me mm, because uh, currently we get this uh, idea that uh, we can learn everything from everyone, uh, everywhere, but it's not really true. Uh, and I think the people should be a bit more humble and uh, they should stop lo looking at like tutorials on, uh, on YouTube and uh, mm -hmm. this and that and find actually somebody that uh, uh, is dedicating uh, their lives into uh, this project. Of master, so to speak, right? Yeah, like, um, yeah, I don't really like this. I super like the idea of a master because I think it's somewhat of an endpoint. Meanwhile, like I, I feel like I'm uh, still developing more and more. But for sure, uh, finding somebody that uh, you can trust, that you can follow, and then uh, in the same way uh, as I'm doing with Ido and some other uh, like teachers that I have uh, in Italy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and uh, or uh, for my masters, and I just stick with them, and uh, they are giving me a lot more. But of course, you need to find somebody that you trust and somebody that is dedicating their lives into it. Mm, and we, we should uh, refrain and move away from this idea that everyone, everyone can teach you. It's true to a certain extent, but it's also not right. true. Yeah, you learn <laughs> something from each person you work with in every exactly. session, but that's not really your master, right? Exactly, exactly. So um, I think we should go back also into this. And also a lot of teachers should, should take the responsibility for the students to tell them how they, they should be learning the material, uh, what directions they should take. Uh, how serious they should be about their uh, their processes, their projects, right. et cetera, et cetera. Because um, otherwise they would end up empty and full of like an accumulation of techniques mm -hmm. without like a, a line, a red line, you know, like uh, a, a rationale, a clear rationale of philosophy, how they do things, why they do things, what they do uh, in such a way that it's not just uh, randomly coming into into your life. And then in the same way, leaving your life mm -hmm. like without, without um, actually giving you anything in the process. Because at the end of the day, everything that we are going through uh, is, is the most important thing. It's not like what we reach. I'm mm -hmm. not the first one to say this, but uh, it's really, really true. Like, uh, for example, like developing a work ethic, this, uh, this sustainability in a practice um, and, and so on, so on. It's, these are the most important things. N n definitely not just the technique by itself. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the master's degree is what you're working on today, and but you're doing a lot of teaching too. So, what are your future plans for? Are you planning to finish your master's and then expand your teaching, or reduce your teaching and expand your personal yeah. studies? Like, where, where, are you, where are you going? What's the big exactly. picture here? So, <laughs> uh, I will certainly keep going uh, in the direction that I've taken, which means I want to work on my like, movement development on my personal project and so on in somewhat of a vectorial way. So I just throw a vector out there mm -hmm. and follow it for a certain amount of period or, or period of time. And then I change it slightly, I readjust and I keep going. I readjust and I keep going. I, don't, I, I tend not to, to create strategies that are too long term. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, no, no I, ten -year I, I have plan, no idea. Right? <laughs> yeah, 10 years, no idea. Where, where am I going to be in the world? What am I going to do, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I'm, I know I, I will keep digging into this field. But uh, year after year and travel after travel, things readjust. Mm -hmm. And it's also, mm, uh, it's also very much how life works in general. We tend to think that uh, what we do 
like what, what we think. Uh, it's um, the best way, like the, the logical approach. No, it's the best way. Instead, then we, we are hit by all these black swans no? that mm-hmm. come out of nowhere and change it. Everything. But, and, but just because you had planned 20 years in advance, you cannot really react. <laughs> right. You know, because, yeah. And the, um, yeah, for me, it is the same. So, and also, uh, so just to get a bit more practical, um, after finishing the masters, I would like maybe to open a place, uh, like, um, having a gym or no, like, I don't like the, the word gym, but yeah, uh, a space. It, it's a choose yeah, your noun adventure, a gym, yeah, like, an uh, academy, a school. Yeah. Like, right? uh, yeah, mm, yeah. A space where, where to do, um, uh, my, my research and I, to have a, a spot in the map. Yeah. A place uh, where you can where, control the environment. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, I don't know where, uh, for sure. Now I stayed in Italy mainly because I care about Parkour Wave and all the, the mm-hmm. rest of the guys there and all the work that we have been, uh, we have been doing. Uh, and, um, but yeah, I'm also thinking about maybe moving somewhere else. Uh, it's, it's still, uh, an open question for me as well. Mm, but, uh, yeah, regarding my studies also, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm going to do a PhD, maybe not, but it, it's, uh, it, it really depends on, uh, uh, how much time I can have because I want to leave uh, time for my practice. It's still the main thing that mm-hmm. I want to do. Huh? So still drawn by movement, right? Yeah, now. like uh, throughout the throughout the years, uh, throughout the days. That's what I do. That's what I like to do. I like to think of uh, like you know I'm gonna work in the next life because everything that I do. <laughs> I, I can keep this when I go around on the next lap because I don't want to have to start over, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but so um, this this is it mainly. Uh, the to answer your question, I don't know, but I know uh, up to maybe six months from now, mm-hmm. and I think it's also something nice to keep in our heads. It's not like I, I'm not trying to make it sustainable for myself, like mm-hmm. the whole future it is, but I'm also trying to be as open as I can and as uh, in, in listening uh, uh, yeah, as I can, so that I can actually change certain things without uh, having a big problem like in my life. Marcello, I mentioned at the beginning that you have been studying um, under Ido Partalv in the, for the last four years. And uh, I'm guessing that if I say, who's the first person that comes to mind when I say successful, you would probably say... Ido, yeah. Uh, okay, so can you tell me maybe either what, what it is about Ido or his method maybe that drew you to his style of training or like you want to... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's the first person that I found had a lot of clarity in the, in the field that he was exploring and it's something that I value a lot because and also is the first one that I found having like strong ethics in uh, in, uh, in, mm. uh, in okay. training uh, he had this personal philosophy a very clear key message it was m- m- actually making an impact out there uh, is uh, yeah so he had all these different uh, markers that I have like when I was looking oh, for right, person, right. Like, and, I, and I was like oh, okay so he's the guy I want to follow so, and also I want to take care of this relationship. I want to take care of this because I, there is this uh, idea now that you always uh, switch between, as I was saying before, right. you switch between all different teachers and this and that. And I like this idea instead um, of taking care of people and uh, being taken care of, mm-hmm. like uh, the same way as I do with my family or with some friends. I don't mind about having 10,000 friends and then not, not caring about any of them, but <laughs> right. like having those, you know, like 10 people you really care about and um, you create this this uh, somewhat of a tribal uh, approach to, towards like uh, developing mm-hmm. in your, throughout your life and uh, you stick with them. It's not a re- huge issue if you don't have like 20,000 friends really mm-hmm. or uh, p- as long as you really cultivate the, the relationship mm-hmm. through time, through the years and you manage to find a balance. If you, if you are doing this, I, I think there is a lot uh, to take out. Um, from this. So, yeah, to get back to, uh, to Ido, um, also um, in the way uh, he's creating processes, he allows people to start from scratch and progress from there. And this is something like creating a lot of progression regressions, uh, insights about what uh, what is happening when, blah, blah. Uh, it's, um, it's really, really interesting. And it's something that I felt like it was kind of missing also into into my practice up to a certain extent even if i was pushing towards that direction mm-hmm. i still had certain links uh like links missing and uh, 
I went there, I just whoop, filled the map. Uh, I told him many times, like uh, at times it uh, it looks like it's a it's a it's a spoiler mm -hmm. what you're doing to two <laughs> It's a shortcut. Right? So then and uh, it was like yeah, but uh, it's it's an infinite discovery. Mm. Uh, it's uh, don't don't let it spoil you. And I was like, yeah, it's it's also true. And of course, the final question: three words to describe your practice. Okay, so my practice with time it uh, definitely became more sustainable. Uh, which means um, I try to fluctuate it uh, a lot more uh, between being um, like, uh, for example, heavy strength training work, you know, and <laughs> something more endurance based and something more soft and just uh, some internal work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So just making sure it's uh, it's something that I can actually do for a very long time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and this is, um, but also sustainable in the sense that also on the business side of things, it. It, it's necessary to make it sustainable if you are teaching in the field mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's all things that should be addressed otherwise up to a certain extent it works and then you just fall into the black hole you're tying you know like uh, the heavy weight onto your ankle and then throwing the, the weight into the lake waiting <laughs> until it pulls you <laughs> yeah, it's like it's just gonna happen uh, to, to a certain uh, extent um, so the second one I would say uh, uh, development uh, develop an explore, exploration uh, of different fields and it doesn't happen unless you want it to happen uh, you need to uh, search for it uh, which means traveling which means uh, a lot of thinking which means a lot of talking to a lot of people also with you here uh, it's still something like uh, then I go back home and like I write a couple of like a weirdo writing uh, on my notebook uh -oh. oh I told you sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, no but like uh, uh, really looking for it and uh, striving towards um, working on all the possible weaknesses that I find on myself mm, I hate fighting I hate like uh, going into cold water I hate a lot of things and uh, uh, I was talking with Dudi Malka I was saying yeah, work on your uh, weaknesses and uh, those will become your strength and then you will move on into another layer because uh, people that, like usually weaknesses are shouting at us. Mm. Uh, they, we, exact, we know exactly what we don't like. No? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, maybe we don't know what we like, but we know exactly what we don't like. So they're sh sh shouting at us. We need to work on them and then grow from them. So uh, also the orientation of the practice shouldn't be uh, just uh, aimed towards um, you know, what is easy. Mm. You know, in this sense so at all times out of the comfort zone it's uh, at least like it's not like you need to live your life out of the comfort zone or you'll end up uh, stressed so much when you're uh, I don't know for it it's just gonna die there but at least you know like two or three times per week get out there take a couple of steps come back until it grows and grows and grows and uh, the last one is uh, community in the sense that um, uh, we are social creatures and uh, again, not this, the first person to talk about this, but uh, without other people, we are literally nothing. And uh, we will never be able to develop that much uh, because uh, like, if you take one person and you give it, like just to make an example, no? you take one person, you, you give it a riddle and say, okay, solve this riddle in your room. Mm -hmm. okay? it, it will take him a certain amount of time, like take, take 10 heads, right. put them in the room, same riddle. It, it's just gonna take one tenth of the time or even less. It's because like our intelligence is like are able to mix and summon, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and so all this collective knowledge is a huge, um, uh, and it's a huge thing that we should take care of. Also, uh, there is I was talking uh, about this before this uh, tribal need of for, for development. All together, uh, it's very different. Mm -hmm. it, it, it feels very different when you do it with other people. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Marcello. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, it was a pleasure to be here. Thanks. This was episode 26. For more information on this episode, go to moversmindset.com slash 26. While you're there, please consider supporting this project by becoming an insider. Thank you for listening.